okay so in this lecture we are going to uh, study about something called as uh, integral domain this is a section which is named as integral domain and to know what is an integral domain we must first understand what is the concept of uh, zero divisors okay so let me just tell you what are zero divisors they are also called as divisors of zero sometimes you say it like this or zero divisors now if you know that if i write uh, 6 as 2 into 3 okay then what do you see i say you see that 2 is a divisor of 6 this is what you say or you say 3 is a divisor of 6 so suppose if i have instead of 6 if i have a 0 and if instead of 2 i have a instead of 3 i have b okay where a and b both are not equal to 0 if you have uh, 0 is equal to a into b where a and b both are not equal to 0 then i will say that what then this uh, a and b will be what they will be divisors of zero okay now this is very amazing or it is very amusing to see that how can it happen that two numbers are not equal to zero but still their multiplication is coming to be equal to zero okay then uh, what is the meaning of this definition we know that if product of two numbers is zero then at least one of the number has to be equal to zero so how can this happen that both the two numbers are not equal to zero still the product is becoming equal to zero so let us see one simple example okay you suppose you are working in the uh, ring suppose i'm working in the ring called as z 12 okay that 12 is a ring with respect to addition and multiplication modulo 12 okay then i see that uh, 3 into 4 3 bar into 4 bar is how much is equal to 12 bar which is 0 bar so this means that you got an example where both the numbers are not equal to 0 but still the product is coming to be equal to what 0 in this case we say that 3 bar is a divisor of what is a divisor of zero bar and similarly four bar is also a divisor of zero bar or in other words we will say that three bar is a zero divisor okay instead of saying divisor of zero divisor of zero we will say and four bar is also a zero divisor can you find all the zero divisors of um, z12 can we find all the zero divisors of z12 yes so i know that first zero divisor is three bar because three bar into four bar is zero bar four bar is also zero divisor two bar is also divisor why because two bar into six bar is how much zero bars this means that six bar is also a zero divisor okay now is uh is uh is eight bar a zero divisor is uh what 8 bar should be multiplied by how much so that uh, i will uh, get equal to what zero now we know that 8 uh, 8 3 is also 24 correct and 8 3 is 24 means 24 will also become zero in z12 so 3 bar is already written in the list so who is the new zero divisor that i'm getting i'm getting uh, that 8 bar is also a 8 bar is also a zero divisor okay is 9 bar a uh, zero divisor so nine should be multiplied by what so that i will uh, get uh, zero okay so you just have to search some number where nine multiplied by something is equal to yes nine four bar right so nine four is a 36 so nine bar will also become zero what about 10 bar i think 10 bar is also zero because uh, 10 bar into six right 10 six uh, is 60 now nah? so 10 bar into 6 bar will become so the 60 bar will again become 0 bar so 10 bar will also become 0 bar. and this is a set complete set so 11 you won't be able to find do you now observe that what are all these numbers these numbers are something special and they are related with 12 in some or the other way. so all these numbers are all these numbers are not relatively prime with what with 12 okay so the gcd with respect to 
12 should not be equal to 1 these are the, all the so this is one of the criteria to check the zero devices okay now if i give you one more example uh, suppose i take a set of matrices suppose i take r is a set of matrices suppose i'm taking m to r with respect to usual addition and multiplication okay then if i take a matrix a and suppose that matrix is 0 1 0 0 okay can i find a non-zero matrix okay this matrix is non-zero a is already non-zero okay so this is non-zero matrix so can i find a matrix something some matrix which is i'm calling b so that this will entirely become a zero matrix and now we know in our previous lectures we have discussed that this a is a nilpotent matrix so a square will be how much equal to zero so what is that other matrix that i will choose which will uh, give me this product as zero zero so that other matrix is none other than it is the matrix a itself okay so this a is also non-zero the second person this is also non-zero but their multiplication is coming to be what zero i have never said that a and b should be different a and b can be same okay so this means that zero one zero zero is what becomes a uh, becomes a zero divisor okay of which ring of the ring m to r okay we can also take some uh, some matrix of this form so uh, suppose i write one two and if i write two four okay now now is this is this matrix a zero divisor how will you check whether it is a zero divisor so what people do is when you take such a matrix and uh, you have suppose i write one two two four you just try to find out i will first tell you the method and then i will tell you the trick okay so if i write down the matrix b is suppose i write minus two and one here okay and uh, let me write a minus two and a one again here okay then let me try to check what is a and b so when i take one two two four and if i multiply it by minus two one minus two one okay i'm just guessing this okay so this mill multiplication will be how much minus two plus two will become zero in the second entry minus two plus two will again become zero here it will become minus four plus four will also become zero and here minus four plus four will again become a zero so this uh, the, this means that i have found a matrix uh, for a non-zero matrix a i have found out a non-zero matrix b such that what a into b has become a zero matrix okay now before knowing all this how was i sure that this is a zero divisor so this means that a is a a is a zero divisor of this matrix so what you have to do is you just have to check the determinant of that matrix what is the determinant of that matrix so this is a trick so what is the determinant of that a matrix the determinant is zero as soon as the determinant is zero you can surely say say that it has to be a zero divisor means you will be able to find a matrix b such that a into b will come up to be how much a into b will come up to be equal to zero. i have also told you the trick if i i will one explain it here now see suppose i give you the matrix a is equal to say uh, 3 1 and uh, 6 2 okay what matrix b will you choose here so that uh, this will become zero so three multiplied by x and six multiplied and one multiplied by y i will write that x and y again so what is the equation when i multiply a b with two a, a b what will i get i will get three x plus y so and choose x and y such that uh such that 3x plus y will become equal to zero so what is the value of x i will choose i will say choose x equal to one and choose y equal to three as soon as i choose x equal to one and y is equal, x equal to minus one sorry and y is equal to three the matrix b that i will get is what a minus one three minus one three so this matrix will is a matrix such that a into b will 100 percent give you the answer to be equal to zero okay this uh, this is the see i have not when i was finding x and y i have not even paid attention at six and two that is automatically adjusted okay why because the determinant of this matrix is what the determinant of this matrix is zero this means that these two rows that i'm talking three one and six two they are linearly dependent rows okay only then the determinant becomes zero and if they are linearly dependent means 
one row is a multiple of the other row so if you find the the numbers with respect to the first row the same numbers will also work for the second row because the two rows are linearly dependent they depend on each other they are multiples of each other that is why the determinant has become equal to zero so this is the meaning of uh, this is the way you have zero divisors in the set of matrices okay so what is an integral domain integral domain means what first of all the ring should be a commutative ring i will i want commutative rings okay then i want with unity the ring must contain what must contain unity that u i will call one okay so automatically 2z is out of this picture because 2z does not contain unity automatically matrices is also out of the picture because matrices it is not commutative right okay r is a commutative ring with unity is set to be is set to be an integral domain if it does not contain what if it does not contain zero divisors so this means that the people which are not integral domains we have automatically pointed them on what is the first person who will not be an integral domain first person is 2z because unity is not there unity missing then second example that i told you is set of matrices what is the reason because it is not commutative and not only that in two in m2r we also found ha zero divisors right i have just now shown you you have matrices right so has zero divisors also right the next example that will not be a member of integral domains means this these people will be not of our interest in coming lectures okay we will pay less attention to them because they are not integral domains next is zmn right any composite number for example i took z12 right so zmn why zmn is not an integral domain because m bar into n bar will give you how much zero bar right suppose i say take z z of 6 into 2 means z, z of 12 so this means 6 bar into 2 bar itself is giving you how much zero bar correct so zmn so all uh, zns with composite index they will also become out of my study i will i'm not interested in them much so they will not be integral domains okay then right, we know many rings we know real numbers rationals complex numbers q root 2 z root 2 we know so many rings okay we know z p's right we know the set of all functions the ring of all functions all these there, there are so many of them z is also missing so all these are rings so now I'm, i have eliminated some, these three people from that list and now these people i have to check whether they are integral domain or not okay. now let us go to uh, the first thing first point i have covered integral domains i have covered and it examples also i have told you so here uh, one problem will give us some good thing that if i look at z2 okay z2 contains of what z2 contains of zero bar and one bar this set two is uh, will become what this is the first uh, simplest example of an integral domain right so what are the multiplications in z2 zero bar into zero bar is zero bar zero bar into one bar is what zero bar and one bar into one bar is sorry one bar into zero bar is again zero bar and one bar into one bar is also one bar right in it so so here you see that the three multiplications are zero okay and uh, in the first one there is there is nothing to sh show uh, so the zero into zero is zero means both are zero so for zero devices what we need they should not be equal to zero right so here in the second part what is happening zero bar into one bar is becoming zero bar out of which this person is zero correct the first person is is what the first person is zero so it cannot be a zero devices for zero devices what do you need both of them should not be equal to zero okay so even this fails to satisfy the definition of zero devices similarly this also fails to satisfy the definition of zero devices because at least one of them is zero now so it is not a zero device. and last the question doesn't arise because the multiplication is not equal to zero right so this means that uh, this uh, this all these four multiplications tells us that uh, z2 has no zero devices 
okay there are no divisors of 0 and this means that 2 will automatically become what that 2 will become a integral domain okay you should not be able to find zero divisors now the next part is that is m2 z2 an integral domain so is n2 z2 an integral domain the spelling is wrong okay is is it a integral domain so again i will tell you that choose a matrix a or uh, what 0 1 0 0 and what is the matrix b that i should multiply 0 1 0 0 so these are entries in z2 and what is happening to the multiplication the multiplication is coming up to be zero this means that m2 z2 has zero divisors and therefore m2 z2 is not an integral domain okay so it is not an integral domain so this is very easy uh, the next theorem which we are not going to prove but that theorem will give us very good idea about what are integral it says that take any field that will always be an integral domain so what are the fields that we know what are the fields that we have discussed in our previous lecture so every field is what is integral domain important result for example what are the fields that we know we know that real numbers rational numbers complex numbers zp where p is a prime okay these are all infinite field this was a finite field then you know q root 2 if you remember in the previous lecture we have proved q root 2 is also field not only q root 2 in general you can take q root p where again p is a prime all are fields and therefore by the above theorem all are all of these are what integral domains okay so now we have come up with a good picture saying that these are all rings i have okay and out of these rings what are integral domains we are very sure because we know what are all fields so the picture becomes real rationals complex zps and uh, what and what was the last one q root p okay q root p all these people have become fields and whatever the remaining people are who are the remaining people remaining people are 2z then matrices correct right? then uh, zmn composite m m into n the space of all functions still i have not identified that obviously this we have not proved field yet okay so, uh, the space of all functions uh, we have not yet proved that it is a field that is why i am keeping it outside the integral domain okay so in the lecture in, in the coming lectures we will see that this uh, person is actually not integral domain okay that is the reason i have written it in the outside the set of integral domains okay so this theorem wo works as a very important tool for identifying us what are integral domains that you take any field that field has to become what that field has to become an integral domain